Okay, so I've come to Swindon today. <laughs> Nothing unusual there, but uh, I am in Swindon. I'm parked outside the BBC. <laughs> oh, yes. Parked outside. Double gear lines, causing a traffic chaos. Uh, I was told it was going to be okay, but it's a very, very narrow road. Uh, so I'm not actually quite sure if it's safe. However, um, I've got my blue badge up. But we'll see how we go with that. So, I mean, the big question is, why am I here? Well, <laughs> that's what we all ask ourselves. <laughs> why are we here? And that's probably number 42, isn't it? Um, but I am in Swindon, I am outside the BBC. Uh, this is BBC Wiltshire Radio and uh, I'm going to be going in shortly to do an interview uh, for tonight's show. Anyway, I am going to go in, I'm going to see if I can uh, get logged in. Uh, hopefully this car will still be here when we get back, uh, if it's not been towed away or something or crashed into. But we are actually here. Yeah. Just about to see that. To be fair to uh, everybody, I have been here before. I have been on uh, BBC Radio before. I've done uh, several programmes for over the years. Sue Davis and uh, Graham Seaman. Yeah, so basically I'm I'm a, not a radio novice, but we are going to go in and uh, see what happens. Now, I have asked if I can video, but I haven't as yet got a response. So I don't know if I can video or not, but I will do my best. Uh, maybe in the studio, hopefully I'll be able to make a video. Anyway, I'll catch you in a minute and we see what happens. So if not, then it will be when I get outside. Oh dear me, that'd make a very good video, wouldn't it? <laughs> so I'm going in and coming out. So I'm thinking that we're going to break this into three chunks, if that's all right with you. Uh -huh. And the first one will probably cover your travel blog. And then if we chat a little bit in the middle bit about your um, social... Uh, what do you want to call it? <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the access, the, part, the, the vlogs that you've done to try yeah. and make life easier for... Yeah. Um, Hello. <laughs> Hello. To try and make things easier for us. This is Sue people. and Tim, by the way, in case you, well, you can't hear me because I've, I've got this mic facing me, so it <laughs> doesn't matter what you say, you just have to semaphore. Okay. You'll be fine. There you go. See, thank you, Sue. That's very kind. <laughs> so this is BBC Wiltshire right. News Booth. And I am going to uh, hit record now. Are you really? What we're starting, are we? Let's, let's do it. Well, I'll, I'll just get the thing. I, have uh, I am prepared. I haven't done my makeup or anything. <laughs> We've got a face for radio. Uh, we all have. Well, uh, so this is the professional, how they do it. Yeah. Unlike me. It's not going well, though. It's not. No. How's my mic? Is it all right? We're only on the green. Okay, One, two, testing, testing. Hello, this is Andy Wright Show. I uh, welcome him, Tim and Sue. Thanks for having us, Andy. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> uh, so there we go. There we go. Okay. Is that it? When no, we done? No, I found the right button now, oh. <laughs> which is always a good start. Great stuff. So, right, so um, we'll take a break. Right, so in the second bit, we'll travel a little, little bit more about the travel. Yeah. A little bit more about the travel and the other countries that you've been to. Yes. And then we'll worry about part three after we've done part two. <laughs> Any part you like. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Hit the button. Is your button hit? My button's on. Okay, that's I'm good. recording me. Right. <laughs> good. Well, we've got, we've got our button on uh, now too. Okay, oh, so wonderful. Do you want to... Tim. What song are we playing? I don't know what song we're playing. I haven't looked at the. Oh, I don't know. Just finishing with the, this, it's all oh started. no, we'll start each bit live and end oh, okay. it end it live. But we'll hit the record and then one of us will pick up. 
uh, live. Yeah. So don't worry mm. about that. Okay. So okay. we'll just start. Uh, Fine questions. Yeah, just start firing okay. questions. Fine. Yeah, cool. Fire away. I won't, okay. I won't talk happy? as much. Are you happy? No, 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 it's great. No, <laughs> it's, it's great. great. That's that's when I get on a roll, it's like, That's you know. No, you're it's brilliant. Because there's, there's lots of stuff that you need to know because of where I'm going. It's it's very difficult and um, can be a little bit boring listening to all this no, back history. No, it's, it's not. not. It's important. It really isn't. It's about you. Yeah, absolutely. My favourite okay. subject. Yes, was well, becoming mine. Is it? Keep it oh, good. Right? Love you, Tim. Yes. Yeah. So you've got two more parts. Of it. He's that smooth. So. All he the is, time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is it all the time? It must be. No, it's not. It's not. My wife gets none of it. Yeah. Right. Are you happy? I'm really happy. Are you happy? I'm, I'm happy. happy. Carry on. So we're back. Far away. Kicking off second half. Andy, you, you, you talked earlier about the martial arts and I just can't get one question out of my head because I'm a massive, massive, genuinely massive fan of a very famous martial arts mm. group called the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> That's right. So I want to know who is your favourite Ninja Turtle? Do you have one? No. What? <laughs> have you even they're seen them? They're not even real, are they? Come on. But, but don't say that to me. Of course <laughs> they're real. And they're four of my heroes. I'm a Donatello man. Oh, are you? Honestly. Um, He's I, the pizza guy, isn't he? That's Michelangelo. Oh, is but, it? But they all do love a pizza. Do you yeah. love a pizza? Oh, I love a little bit of a pizza. But then I'm on a health kick, so I don't eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More Can't pizza, I think. More pizza. Be more like the turtles. Mm -hmm. So tell me, of all the places you've gone to, have you got a favourite? Does one stand out for you? Well, I, have, I suppose I'm a bit biased because I do have a Thai wife, so I think Thailand is my favourite at the moment. Um, I have been lots of places. I, I said, um, basically, I think um, if I was going to go back and... Um, <laughs> right, let's... Uh... Let's make the third part all about turtles. No, let's <laughs> not. <laughs> all right, let's... Um, I'm hitting record again. Here we go, the microphones are open. Michael Bublé, it's a beautiful day. Every Monday is a beautiful day with Tim Weeks on the social on BBC <laughs> Wiltshire. Thank you to all of you who've been busy at BBC Wiltshire on the Twitter. Martin Hughes, you especially loving your critique this evening. You've had a cracking first hour, Tim, haven't you? It's a great first hour. I mean, I had a friend in and we've learned about another great <laughs> sorry, podcast. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You had your I had my one friend, friend Your in. one friend Correct. in. And he was nice and normal and everything. I was surprised. Can you it was lovely. It? Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> and the podcasts were great. We got so much more to come next mm -hmm. hour. We're um, off with vlogger Andy Wright around the world. So that's to come after the news and we head there now in the company of Jackie Chan. You're listening to The Social on BBC Wiltshire with Sue and I and up next it's the news. Not talking over that. No, don't. That would have upset you. It would, let it roll. That was for Martin Hughes, uh, <laughs> Guns N' Roses, on the social, on BBC Wiltshire on a Monday evening. Very good evening to you. I hope we find you well. Uh, your mate, uh, Tim, that was in earlier, Chris Burgess, he's yes. tweeting pictures of you in days oh, gone by no, no. when you were younger. Yeah, a lot younger, I Before bet. another milestone birthday was coming up. Is yeah. it a milestone birthday coming up on well, Thursday? Well, they all are now, aren't they? Once you're in your 30s. Are you in your 30s? Yeah, oh, just. Oh, he's ageing well. Just. 36. So, <laughs> I think you'll find that's knocking on the door of yeah, 40. I, no, 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 no. Less of that. <laughs> Taking long strides uh, towards it. <laughs> I know. Just look at the whatever he's doing on Twitter and social media. Just focus on that. I'm still yeah. very much 25. You were, you were blonde once, apparently. Was I? Yeah. No, no I wasn't. No. Yeah. Okay. no. Fair I had enough. red hair for a while. Did I, you? Just the front. When Arsenal won the league once, I did a bit of red to now, celebrate. See, we're very honoured to have you here this evening because <laughs> yeah, your you team are. is playing tonight, I Arsenal, know. and you, you're not watching it. You're nope. fully engaged with us. I'd rather be here. Yes, of course you would. Have you seen this uh, How to Speak Social Media no, uh, article? It's Jargon Made Simple, uh, which, you know, if you're trying to keep up with teenagers and, you yes. know, they, they, it, there's a whole new jargon that's emerged as a, as a result of being online. Um, FTFY. FT. You want me to tell you what that means? Yeah, go on. Cause... Football is tonight, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Fixed that for you. Oh, OK. See, that's, that's yeah, quite a yeah, good, good short code, isn't yeah. it? OK. Uh, I-C-Y-M-I. I-C-Y-M-I. I can't 
you, me, I? No, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. I'm going to love this game. We're going to play this game quite <laughs> yeah. a lot this hour. Uh, in case you missed it, ah, I see okay. why I'm... I missed it. See, when you know... Yeah, I missed it. I didn't give you a clue either. That might explain it. But but when you know what it stands for, it all seems uh, relatively easy. We will be unravelling the mysteries of how to speak social media in the next hour. But up next, after George Ezra, our vlogger this week... It's only Andy Wright, travel vlogger extraordinaire, after George Ezra, Shotgun, on BBC Watcher. George Ezra, Shotgun, on BBC Watcher. This is The Social, and at this time on a Monday evening, we introduce you to a vlogger or blogger, and last week we met the lovely Simone Partner, a beauty vlogger, who unboxes stuff as well on her <laughs> YouTube channel. And tonight we're going to meet Andy Wright from Westbury who campaigns on disability rights and vlogs about his experiences. He's also a martial arts instructor and travel vlogger too. He popped in to see us earlier today. I was born with cerebral palsy a long time ago and uh, I've had to sort of struggle with life um, but I haven't let it sort of get me down or, or prevent me from doing anything. I've got on with stuff, uh, regular life, regular job, married divorced, etc. Hmm. All of that business that people do. And uh, in sort of later on in life, I had to have major surgery on my back, which I then discovered wasn't correct. And it left me unable to walk. And I had to relearn how to walk again. Uh, it's, again, it's a struggle. So, um, you know, life is a struggle. But, you know, you have to carry on. How bad a struggle has it been, Andy? First with cerebral palsy and then relearning walking. Well, I have to. If I was going to describe it, it's a bit like déjà vu. I've done it once, and then you have to do it all, all again. Literally learning how to walk. And um, the problem for me is I had to go to work as well, so I had to earn a living and be, you know, less mobile. But you know, somehow I managed it. Now, what did you do? As a job? Yeah, I teach uh, health exercise, which is also where I come from in in my history, which I started doing um, martial arts karate in 1985 wow. uh, because I was, I was attacked and beaten up just uh, randomly. And um, I wanted to learn how to defend myself. And in the end, I ended up learning um, and I've been doing it since then, so 85 onwards, um, I now hold a, a rank of a 7th Dan Black Belt. Um, 7th Dan yeah, Black Belt? Yeah. That's quite good, isn't it, Tim? I don't really brag Who's about Dan? it. Who's <laughs> it's, Dan? It's a ranking system, and that's right. got you right at the top, doesn't it? It's it's one of the very few in the country. Um, not many have 7th Dan, and also not many have a, a disability as well. So how, it's how quite you, unique. Yeah, and what form of martial arts do you teach? Well, I, I teach my own style at the moment. I started moving into that after I got my 4th Dan. God, I was like, yeah. you know, where else is there to go? Uh, but, I mean, to me, the ranks aren't, aren't important. It's about martial arts being a way of life, and it's all, it's all part and parcel of what I do. So... Being a, a Japanese uh, a martial arts system, uh, I had one of the largest clubs in Wiltshire. I had seven different clubs for a long, long time, and then everything sort of changed for me, and I moved in a different direction. I moved into the, the more health area, so doing health exercise, Tai Chi Qigong, and health exercise for people like myself. I, I now teach that professionally. Uh, for since about 2009 online um, online yeah online in person you know whatever people want really um but everybody i teach uh, i teach in, in in wiltshire mainly but I, I go anywhere you know i've been all over the world uh teaching including russia i went there in 1996 just when they opened up the borders and things like this and i've been to malta and america and Australia, uh, various countries around the world, teaching uh, karate and also um, Tai Chi as well. And you vlog about your travels and about you know yes. the martial arts that that you teach. So where where that came from was after the surgery, and I found that my limiting in my abilities, I was looking for a new direction in order to make my life a lot easier and. Um, because I enjoy travelling, I mean, I literally have been to most most countries 
and some of them are like I say Siberia for example not many people have been there. A bit chilly. <laughs> a bit chilly. A little bit chilly. <laughs> <laughs> and difficult to get around because of that. Yes, and, and different attitudes towards less able people as well. In what mm, way? Well, they have a harder, harder time of it. There's no sort of social benefit system. People have to, uh, sometimes they have to beg on the street. And uh, you know, it's very difficult for me to see that because I know I live in a in a Western country. For me to go there and experience it is an, is an experience in itself. Um, uh, it's an eye opener, really. And I I'm very grateful for what I've got in this country, but I also see what they've got, which is not a lot. And is that what drives you to vlog mm. about it so other yeah. people can see? I want to I want to spread the word about you know, travel. Uh, because it is opening up for disabled people, there's a lot of uh, areas now that are opened up uh, around the world that people should go and have a look at because it's part of the, you know it's part of the world, and it's staggering. It really is when you see the the the, the lush green mountains of Thailand and uh, you know the, the the very straight roads of Australia, and you wonder, my goodness me, you know. Everybody should go and have a look at this because it's it's wonderful. It really is. Andy Wright there, who vlogs as Andy Wright Travel and on Talking Really. We'll have more from him in a moment. Queen, one vision on BBC Wiltshire. Welcome to The Social. Uh, we are in conversation this hour with our vlogger this week. He is Andy Wright and he came in from Westbury to see us earlier today. Andy was born with cerebral palsy and has blogged about his health issues. He's also vlogged about the many countries he's travelled to. And he's also a martial arts instructor, we learnt. So, as you would expect from me, a massive fan of the <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I asked him if he had a favourite martial art turtle. No. What? <laughs> Have you even They're seen not them? They're even real, are they? Come on. But, but don't say that to me. Of course <laughs> they are real. And they're four of my heroes. I'm a Donatello man, oh, I obviously. And he's I, the pizza guy, isn't he? That's Michelangelo, oh, but it? but they all do love a pizza. Do you yeah. love a pizza? Oh, I love a little bit of a pizza, but then I'm on a health kick, so I don't eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more Can't pizza, I think. More pizza, be more like the turtles. Mm, so mm. tell me, of all the places you've gone to, have you got a favourite? Does one stand out for you? Well, I, have, I've got, I suppose I'm a bit biased because I do have a Thai wife, so I think Thailand is my favourite at the moment. Um, I have been lots of places. I, I said um, basically, I think um, if I was going to go back anywhere, I'd probably try and go back to Siberia. Wow. Uh, you know, I was a young, naive young man then, and uh, I don't didn't blog it. I wasn't blogging then. I would love to blog it. I think it would be really good. I mean, mm. I see the tele tele programs. You know, all these people travelling the world, and I'm thinking, mm, I think I'll make a note of these. I maybe want to go there sometime in my life. Because uh, they look really nice. Mm. So with Siberia, though, what's the access? Is it is it easy? Is it accessible no, to get around? Or hard work for you? Really hard work. Uh, it would be now even more so because I'm less able than I was then, and uh, the whole system of of uh, transportation is obviously very geared up for able-bodied people. You know, you've got your planes, you've got your steps, you've got mm. your seating. I mean, they are trying their best to put toilets in planes, but yes. they're very rare. I actually went to um, <laughs> I went to Moscow, and I was actually man manhandled down the steps because they had no lift uh, for the plane. So I was actually carried by this big, really? big burly Russian uh, guy who uh, carried me down the steps to the uh, to the um, terminal. So with that though, do you find you you get offered lots of help all over the world or is there any countries that don't help you can i can i be rude and yes. just say london is not really? very good mm. unfortunately coming back for example one time i had a taxi waiting for me and they were faffing around with their business and there was no wheelchair i, I decided to walk it that's the worst thing i ever did because mm. it was like two miles or whatever it was down the terminal I was staggering by the time I got to the taxi. How much of a response do you get to the vlogs that you make about experiences like that? Interesting that you mentioned that because I, I have done some train vlogs uh, going on the underground, <laughs> which is an uh, experience anyway. Mm. But go, take if you imagine me on my scooter, mobility scooter, on the underground. 
as you see on my lovely t-shirt. It's a great t-shirt. Yeah. There's it's a, a brilliant, brilliant t-shirt. Yeah. But that's me. And, um, you know, when you're on the uh, underground, first thing you obviously have to um, deal with is actually getting down to the platform. Majority of the um, stations haven't got lifts yet. They are doing their best to increase the number of lifts. But I think it's going to be, you know, 20 or 30 years before they've done every single station. Uh, but obviously when I was there doing these vlogs, I experienced what it was like for a wheelchair user. I mean, they do, they they spent all that money on trains, new trains, brand new trains, and they didn't think about the level access for a door. I, it just, I mean, I, I found it staggering that mm. they can do that. And mm. so what I did, I made these vlogs and I put them out there and then I thought, hang on. I need to tell somebody about this. So I sent the blogs on a CD. I sent them to the head office of, of London Transport. I got a response. got a response back saying, thank you very much. We are going to look into it. Overall, very positive about you know, sure. feedback from them. And I was, that's partly why I make the blogs. Because it makes you feel it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. And a lot, a lot of other people have watched those blogs. And they go, yeah, we've had the same problem. We've experienced what you've experienced, you know. Mm. Yeah. And I've done other things like going up the high street, um, you know, doing uh, just a normal high street, go up one side, down the other side, make a video, looking in the doorways, right? Bear in mind that the accessibility laws have been around a few years now. And I'm thinking, do these shops actually want my business? Because I can't get in them. But I'm just wondering, are they going to bring all of the stuff out for me to have a look at, yes. to, to buy? I yeah, don't think they are. Street fair. I don't think they are, no. Mm, Andy Wright there talking about the issues he vlogs about and the difficulties he faces when travelling or indeed shopping. That's right, and we'll have more from him in a little while, plus all of your what's ons. But now it's Kate Bush with the child um, in his arms. Time now for our final chat to our vlogger this week. He is Andy Wright from Westbury, who has cerebral palsy and vlogs about health, travel, and martial arts. And so far this evening, Andy has talked about travelling to Thailand, Siberia, and many other countries, but he also vlogs about this country and indeed this county. So I asked him, what did he think about Wiltshire? Wiltshire is my home county because I've lived here since uh, the 70s. Uh, um, we moved here from Bristol, although Bristol's still in my heart, as it were. <laughs> I was only young then. Um, I have vlogged nearly every single town in, in Wiltshire. I've done town vlogs as well, which is also on my on my travel website. So not only do I travel abroad, I also do vlogs about England as well. There's some beautiful places in, in Wiltshire and some lovely yeah. towns as well. Um, so what, what I try to do is, is do a town vlog to highlight the best parts of it. and well, it, Give us an example of somewhere that you've loved in Wiltshire vlogging about. Well, all of the ones, like Corsham's quite lovely. You know, it's a lovely place to go. And um, I, I just love the rural aspects of it. You know, it's a town in the, in the countryside and it's got some history as well. There's some history because I try to do historical stuff as well. So I, what, what I do when I roll up to a town, I don't necessarily know everything about the town when I get there. So I go around and explore it as if I'm just a, an explorer. Mm. Um, when I get back to the studio, what I'll do is I'll do some research and put in there information about where I am. So if I go past the famous building then they'll come up on the bottom. It'll say what the building was, who it was. I mean, for, you know, there's lots of places that I've been that I didn't know about. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned a lot of things about, you know. So the idea of this is to be educational, but also accessibility, because I don't like to plan things because I want to surprise myself as well. And personally, what, what my aim is in the future, maybe, is to do a, like some sort of TV experience of, of the same blog so have a have a uh, maybe a, a series doing the same sort of thing where i just roll up and do a, a travel thing about a various places and uh, obviously that brings me on to the other channel that i have which is the talking really uh, experience i started that one because i have a desire to have an outlet for disability issues my travel channel is is aimed at everybody so there's no specific 
But what I wanted was an outlet for disability issues, uh, talking about mobility, talking about a benefit system, talking about problems that they may encounter. And I'm doing now, I'm doing a weekly, twice weekly uh, show, live show, live stream, which um, has really taken off really. Uh, and I'm getting people who are watching the show coming on to my show in, in person. These are people that probably have a little bit of anxiety and social uh, dysphoria. Um, and most of them have disabilities. So they're coming on to live stream with me for the very first time ever in life that they've sort of put themselves out there. It's just amazing. I mean, we've had so much fun with it. And it, the thing is, nobody else is doing what I'm doing. Yeah, It's just your face is just lit up. <laughs> you are transformed by your enthusiasm mm. for this. What's your hope from this project? What do you really uh, want to achieve? I'm obviously looking at future of, of these vlogs being hopefully the channel will grow uh, both channels will grow hopefully with more subscribers and supporters uh, but also as i said earlier i would love to be able to take this to um a bigger media so a, a tv sort of avenue i really think that that's the way to go because it, there is basically there's nobody else doing this on tv there's nobody else doing this sort of thing from a from a disability point of view there are plenty of disabled presenters now um, but nobody is doing travel series. But you know, I'm quite happy where I am at the moment with with the with the blogging, because obviously I'm in control of that direction. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming in to see us, and we wish you luck with everything going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you.